Good evening, everyone. I'm Archit Tashadri. Thanks so much for joining us. You're watching We On, the only Indian channel that gets you a global perspective. It is Wednesday, May the 25th. The time now is 9.30 in the morning in New York, 2.30 in London, and 7 p.m. here in Delhi. On tonight's special broadcast, we have new details about the deadly terror attack in Manchester as the UK raises its threat level after Monday's blast. We're also learning the names and the faces of the victims who have now emerged. But first tonight, a new threat that is looming closer to home in India's city of Bengaluru, where the environmental problems continue at Belandur Lake. But what about some of the other bodies of water in the state? What is being done to solve the crisis? Let's go to our correspondent joining us live from Bengaluru, Nishita Virandra, who has been covering the story since it broke. Nishita, it is a sad story. It is a sad issue. Let's also uh, talk a little bit about this. You know, it is a little bit of a relief for those from uh, Bengaluru. But, uh, you know, what about the uh, government? What are they doing for the other bodies of water in Karnataka? Right. Uh, the way the environmentalists are looking at this issue, Archit, is really, while on one hand, yes, everyone is relieved that the NGT has stepped in, it has wrapped the state administration, that it has finally resulted in many of the officials spurring to action uh, rather than just drag their feet and not do anything at all, despite repeated requests from the residents and uh, other good Samaritans. But now the bigger issue that is being looked at is, while yes, Belanduru Lake requires a lot of focus, it is the biggest lake of Bengaluru, but solving the Belanduru Lake a lake crisis alone will not solve the problem in itself. Bengaluru is a city of interconnected lakes and while on one hand, yes, Belanduru Lake is important, but if you clean that up, if you ensure that sewage is not entering Belanduru Lake, it will really not solve the problem. Because there are other lakes in the city. Belanduru downstream is Vartur Lake, which is also frothing and foaming. Uh, upstream is Agara Lake, which is also frothing and foaming. And then you have uh, all these lakes connected to the Vrishabhavati River and that has become a complete mess. In fact, it is also stated by several environmentalists that that river is dead now. Uh, the oxygen, the dissolved oxygen content in that river is dangerously low, much below 4 uh, mg per liter. That is ideal. In fact, if we do look at a few of the studies that were conducted in Bengaluru, one by the Indian Institute of Science that has actively been involved in looking at the conditions of the water bodies in the city, they say that 90% of Bengaluru's lakes are almost dead or at least on the verge of extinction because of the depleted oxygen level levels uh, in these uh, water bodies and it is extremely difficult to rejuvenate them if action is not taken up immediately. So let's fo shift focus now to Subramanyapura Lake, the lake that we on visited today. Now right. Subramanyapura Lake is located slightly on the outskirts of Bengaluru. It's the newer part of the city that is still developing so you can assume that there is a lot of construction activity happening around and likewise nearly 5,000 apartments are around the Subramanyapura Lake and the untreated sewage is let into it directly without uh, uh, any uh, without any processes uh, whatsoever and uh, a blind eye is being turned to this lake now. Belanduru, as I mentioned earlier, has become a celebrity of sorts among all of us. The frothing foaming visuals are extremely dramatic, has caught the nation's attention and imagination. But on the other hand, is that enough is the big question that needs to be really raised here. Are we really solving the problem? Doesn't look like it. All right, Nishita, we're going to have you hold on for just a second. We're going to get you some perspective on this story. As we mentioned, it is a huge relief for some of the people of Bangarulu uh, that the NGT has wrapped the state government for not doing enough to save the Bellandur Lake. But while this move has been appreciated, some environmentalists have questioned about the special treatment. Why specifically this lake when there are hundreds of other bodies as well in the city facing the same struggles? Take a look at the report. It is certainly not as vast as the Bellanduru Lake, but is equally important. For centuries, the Subramanyapura Lake was the primary source of water for the residents here, but today it is a stinking, foaming mess. While Belanduru has become a celebrity of sorts, thanks to the wide coverage that it has received, Subramanyapura Lake, like hundreds of other lakes in the city, is dying a silent death. During 1998-2000 time, you know, the, the lake was so clean, crystal clear, clear water and uh, children used to swim in that. I have seen that. Uh, I bought my site in, in that nearby locality in 2005. Even then, those days, it was so clear. Water was so pure. But now it is completely contaminated. Because the monthly apartments, they let out their uh, 
sewage completely straight you know without any treatment they let it into the tank while dramatic scenes of belanduru lake's infamous foam spilling onto the streets hit international headlines subramaniapura lake too has become a dumping yard for the bbmp trucks residents who moved to the newly developed area only recently are worried about the rapid deterioration in the quality of life here moved in about 2 uh, 3 years back and since then it has been very dirty we see lot of uh, sewage untreated i think which is flowing into the lake and the moment you enter the vicinity of the lake you see lot of stench you know literally uh, you know unbearable environmentalists have also been actively campaigning leo saldana has been championing the cause of the environment in bengaluru for several years now and says that ngt while noting the condition of belanduru lake should have taken the nk patel report into consideration that had a broader view of the lake situation in the city you need to think of belanduru as an important water body because it receives about a third or more 40% of the sewage flows through that while the ngt's attention on belanduru is much required i think ngt should also take a step forward and look at what work the icot had done for instance the justice nk patel committee report was an amazing report it looked into all the previous reports and the work that had been done before and came up with a set of guidelines not just to protect a particular lake but all the lakes the nk patel report in 2011 had taken a holistic view of the condition of lakes in belanduru also prompting the karnataka high court to order the state government to stop the destruction of the lakes according to the 137 page report over 100 lakes have disappeared in the recent past thanks to urbanization It had outlined the steps that needed to be taken to rejuvenate and conserve the lakes but no action was taken. While the NGT order is commendable for prompting officials to take action instead of dragging their feet, the narrow view of just focusing on one lake and not the entire network has raised questions on its effectiveness in the long run. Well the NGT order to clean up the Belanduru lake drew loud cheers from all quarters but will that solve the bigger problem the bigger problem that being that there are hundreds of lakes in Bengaluru that are dying a slow and painful death because of untreated sewage being let into the lake now one such lake is the Subramaniapura lake or popularly known as the Subramaniapura kere right here in Bengaluru on the outskirts of uh, the city and this lake as recently as the late 90s used to supply drinking water water to the residents nearby but today with nearly 500 apartments coming up around this lake as you can see that are directly discharging their waste into the lake this lake has been rendered unusable and a mere menace to the residents here uh, you can't even see the lake because of the thick slush uh, that has been let into the lake and thereby uh, the growth uh, that has resulted because of the same uh, while environmentalists have been fighting for this lake urging the government to clean it up at the earliest something that won't even take much money or uh, too much of effort from the government but there seems to be barely any will just like how we saw in the case of belanduru lake after fighting for nearly 25 to 30 years finally the government is acting and that too only and only because the ngt has wrapped it for the same but will the ngt have to specify each and every lake of bengaluru for the government to act is the big question that needs to be raised what about the other lakes and will clearing only belanduru lake solve the problem not really because all the lakes of bengaluru are interconnected and have been formed as a system by our ancestors to ensure that water is supplied all through the year to the residents of the city but today these lakes are dying and have become a sheer menace even becoming a health hazard for the local residents in bengaluru with video journalist padmanabh rao nishchita vion or let's not go to environmentalist uh, vimalendu jai joining us on this conversation uh, vimalendu earlier we talked about the groundwater depletion now we're talking about the environmental issue in bengaluru somewhat connected environmentalists have uh, really pushed and highlighted the problems regarding the growth the erratic growth of bengaluru any serious action when it comes to this absolutely so if you look at uh, bengaluru almost uh, 1600 million liters of untreated waste actually gets released to these lakes that we are actually talking about there have been several studies that says that most of these lakes as in at one point there were over 250 lakes that bengaluru had and now we are actually left with around 60 67 lakes and all these lakes are also dead so it's it's a it's an absolute it's a classic failure of uh, of governance that we see and the lack of political will because we've actually looked at every government and this is not something that we've achieved in one year two years or this particular regime 
every political party, everyone who has been in, in power in Bangalore has actually given no, no, you know, has not paid any any heed to uh, our lakes. Uh, you know, we are actually talking about the growth, the urbanization right. that has taken the industries that are all around. So all together, it's it's a it's a it's a loss for for Bangalore by 2025. There'll be it will be difficult to survive in Bangalore by the way. All right, let's go to Nishchita again. You know, you saw the lake, Nishchita. Tell us about this report, the NK Patel report, that are taking a broader view of the lake situation in the city of Bangalore. Was this also accepted by the Karnataka High Court? Absolutely. The N.K. Patel report, in fact, came out back in 2011 and made some clear and key recommendations to the government, uh, right from stating that these lakes should be clearly demarcated, their legal extensions should be taken care of. And it's not just the Lake Bed area. What uh, the N.K. Patel report specified is not just the lake area that needs to be taken care of, but or the catchment area, the canals that connect these lakes need to be uh, desilted and need to be it needs to be ensured that uh, the sewage is not uh, let into uh, the lake or any of these canals directly uh, also it said that they have to remove encroachments encroachments is a huge issue in bengaluru uh, the city is growing uh, drastically the population is growing at almost 4% uh, per year but of course as we know the resources have not been able to keep up uh, the government has to make space for more accommodation for accommodating more people who are coming in looking for jobs and uh, education as well. So where to accommodate them? It seems like killing lakes, using it as uh, a new property and constructing buildings on them seems to be the solution that the government and real estate uh, owners seem to be coming up with. So that needs to stop at the earliest. Uh, the NK Partner report also suggested that once the survey is conducted and uh, the legal limits of a lake is identified, it needs to be fenced and watched on a regular basis. Blocked canals which have been encroached uh, upon across the city need to be cleared out at the earliest to ensure the network is back on track. Desilting needs to be carried out regularly. Right. And also an important um, uh, aspect that the NK Patel report mentioned was involvement of the local residents. The ro local communities need to be roped in in order to take care of these water bodies. All right. So my closing comments from both of our uh, uh, panelists and reporters. Uh, let's start with Vimalain Duja. Three final words to wrap up this discussion about the uh, lake situation in Karnataka. Three final words. Vimalain okay. So I think I need to tell you that this this is happening because NGT has stepped in. This is not the responsibility of the court. This is the responsibility of, of our governments. And I think it's it, it's you no know, governance is for the government and not for the courts. All right, let's go to Nishida. Three final words to wrap this all up uh, on the lake crisis in the southern part of India. Well, I, uh, the final words that we'd like to put across here is that while on one hand, yes, the action against Belanduru Lake is much appreciated, but it almost seems like a knee-jerk reaction to uh, all the coverage and all the hype and hoopla surrounding around Belanduru Lake. But the problem is much bigger. The problem is that of these water bodies, Belanduru or otherwise being encroached upon for the sake of real estate, for the sake of space being needed, or for the sake of mafia itself. So keeping all these factors in mind, we need to look at the larger issue of conserving these water bodies rather than focus on one single lake alone only and only because a lot of people are angry about it and you have a lot of apartment complexes nearby where people have invested a lot of money to live in. All right, Nishida Varandar reporting live from Bengaluru and Vimalain Thank you both for your time and perspective.